streaming live, this is News Nation Now. And a good Monday to you. Welcome into News Nation Now. I am Aaron Nolan. Big announcement just about an hour and a half ago from NASA as more water was discovered on the moon. And a very interesting topic. Hundreds of thousands of people have been tuning in here on News Nation Now and our News Nation Now Facebook page to find out more information. For us, we wanted more information, so we are going to go right to the source of this. Dr. Nassim Rongwala joins us now. Dr. Nassim, thank you so much for joining us here on News Nation Now. It's great to be here, Aaron. All right, so let's first off talk about this discovery. Uh, it was done by SOFIA, which is a telescope aboard an airplane that goes above the atmosphere to get very clear pictures of the moon. What does this mean for the moon and the exploration of the moon? Yeah, I mean, so we are so excited to report this discovery. Um, what this means for the moon is we discovered water on the sunlit part of the moon. This is the first time we have confirmed that. Uh, previously, we knew that there was water, but that was in the permanently shadowed regions, like the bottom of the craters. Mm. So it's really exciting to see that there may be water in other parts of the lunar surface as well. And uh, now we would like to know how did this water survive in the harsh conditions? on the lunar surface. Um, we would like to know how it's created, how it's stored, and how uh, it's distributed across the lunar surface. Because this supports the agency's uh, Artemis goal to establish um, a human base on, on the moon. So we want to leverage all our resources to learn as much as possible about water on the moon. So we can, um, uh, so that we have, we can effectively use uh, uh, and extract these resources when needed. Uh, no doubt it is something that is fascinating. We were talking off camera a little bit uh, about my, my firstborn, my daughter, who is right now going through a study of the moon in October, and then this huge announcement comes out. How is this water being generated to the best of your knowledge? I think scientists think that there are maybe two potential ways. Uh, one is through the solar wind that's bringing um, hydrogen uh, to the lunar surface, and then that's interacting with oxygen in the soil uh, to form the, this hydroxyl molecule that then reacts with uh, another hydrogen to form another hydroxyl molecule to form water. Um, another way is that the scientists are thinking it could be micrometeorites that impacting uh, when they impact the moon, as you saw in the video, uh, are bringing water uh, to the moon. Uh, but this water is, is uh, and is expected to be in, in some kind of glass beads. So uh, otherwise they would not have survived this harsh um, environment on the moon. And when we talk about the amount of water, I think this is important, Dr. Rongwala, that we're talking about water that is 100 times less than that of the Sahara Desert, right? Right. I mean, this is not, we're not talking about puddles of water that we found. In fact, these are water molecules that we found, and they're pretty sparse. So they don't inter, they, they're not interacting to form water ice um, or puddles. But it's still very uh, intriguing and very uh, important to know how, uh, you know, how much, how widespread uh, even this type of water is on the moon. We are joined right now by Dr. Nassim Rongwala, who is part of the NASA unbelievable uh, press release that was put out, the information that was put out, that there has been water discovered on the moon. SOFIA is an extremely important aspect of all of this. Talk about SOFIA and how this telescope was used on what I believe was her first venture to look at the moon. Yes, and, and SOFIA is an airborne observatory. It's the world's largest airborne observatory. Uh, it carries uh, a, a nine-foot uh, telescope. Um, and it flies at high altitude, up to 45,000 feet, and that allows us to get above 99% of the water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere. So for this discovery, we were able to uh, differentiate the water on the, or det and detect water on the lunar surface without contamination from the terrestrial water. And it sh actually, we study, uh, normally we study distant and much dimmer objects like black holes and galaxies and star clusters, which we love to study as well. But this was the first time we were looking at the moon, and this was a test, because moon is much brighter and much closer. It fills our field of view. So when we were doing this test, uh, we weren't sure if we will be successful. Our guider cameras that, we, uh, that help us identify and track targets on the sky uh, uh, we didn't know if they will saturate. And if they did, we wouldn't know where on the moon we were pointing. Um, additionally, 
uh, we, uh, our instrument that we were using, uh, we didn't know if the flux from the moon would saturate the instrument as well. Um, so uh, we actually scheduled this observation towards the end of the flight. Um, so as to not disrupt our other observations. And what was essentially a test led to this discovery. What was the, what was the reaction like when you realized what you had possibly found in molecules of water on the sunny side, if you will, of the moon? So let me tell you, I think there were two sets of reaction. I'm sure the reaction <laughs> on the flight when these folks finally saw, I, I heard, finally saw the image of the moon on the guider camera and they were like, oh yes, we got it. And then they started seeing the data coming in and they were excited that we at least getting data. And when, when the analysis uh, was uh, done, which was about a few months ago, um, we found out that there is potentially, you know, we have discovered water on the moon. And after the review process was finished, we were literally over the moon, no <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> Oh, I think you can use, I think that's the one time where that pun is perfect uh, in this. Let's talk about the value of water. Uh, we're talking about 2024 and maybe sending the first woman to walk on, on the moon and the next man to walk on the moon. The value of water, where does that progress us in space exploration? So water is a critical resource in these deep space exploration. Um, uh, you know, we, want, we don't want to carry tons of water with us to the moon. We would like to carry other resources to the moon. So it's really important for us to understand, not just on the moon, um, but uh, elsewhere in the solar system, how, uh, you know, where the water is, how it's formed, and how we can access it. So, uh, you know, when we do go to the moon and then to Mars and beyond, um, we know um, as if we collect information from every asset we have, we are, in the, we are in the best position to be able to leverage it for exploration. Dr. Wanwala, uh, does this make hope of accumulating water on the moon possible? We will have to wait and see, and that's that's exactly uh, the, the 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 studies of, on future NASA missions will show. You know how much water uh, there is, and where uh, where the water is located, what type of water, and in which locations we can extract it more, most efficiently. What is your message today to to kiddos who are going to look up at the moon tonight after their parents come home and tell them what was discovered by yourself and other scientists there at NASA? What would you tell them as they look up at the moon? You know, Aaron, like you mentioned, you have a six-year-old. I have an eight-year-old and a four-year-old who have not yet heard of this discovery. Um, and I am going to talk to them this evening as well. And I think the, 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 the hope always is that we can inspire our next generation. These this discoveries like these are so exciting and they're so relatable because you look at the, you know, you, you know all our kids look at the moon, they draw them in different way. And, uh, and so this is something uh, we are so excited to report uh, and, and talk to our kids and hopefully this will inspire them and they will be the next people going to either moon or Mars or beyond. When, what you just said, uh, I kind of got chill bumps at it. Again, I've got two daughters at home and, and knowing, you know, inspiring kiddos. But for you personally, when you were able to say that and you're gonna be able to inspire kiddos across this country for an out-of-this-world discovery, what does that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, I am, um, I'm excited, overwhelmed, very grateful. Um, I work with a, a very talented and multidisciplinary team. That's the kind of team um, that make these such discoveries possible on, on Sophia and I'm sure on other missions. So it's truly an honor to be a part of this discovery. All right, as we start to wrap up here, Dr. Rangwala, Let's, let's kind of reload here. If I was to tell someone that I meet out on the street that NASA found water on the moon, what does this mean for our future in this country and really across the universe? You know, we are um, right now in a, in a global pandemic, right? And um, it's affecting the whole, it has it's, it's almost affected the whole world and every aspect of our lives. And this is the time I wanna tell people that we will continue to make discoveries. We will continue to move forward as much as we can, as safely as we can. Um, and uh, this, is, this is a very good example of that. Oh, providing a little bit of hope, a galaxy far, far away, if you will, in our moon that is right there. 
Final thing before you go, uh, I, I want to thank you for taking the time here on News Nation. Now, when will Sophia make another flight, and will this uh, will this flight be focused on the moon once again for the possibility of more discoveries there on the moon? Yes. The, so the earliest opportunity that we have uh, to observe the moon again would be in early spring of 2021, and so we are really looking forward to that. All right, Dr. Nassim Rongwala from NASA, thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Aaron. Again, what a cool discovery this was as NASA made the announcement about 11 o'clock central, noon on the East Coast, that water had been found in a giant crater on the moon that we could actually see from here on Earth. What that is right now, it's very small. It's molecular. It's, uh, and the research that I have done, NASA is saying the amount of water they found is about a hundredth of time, one one hundredth of, uh, of the amount of water that is present on the Sahara Desert. So you're not talking about a lot of water. But the discovery there lends itself to so many different possibilities as now NASA is aiming at putting the first woman on the moon to walk on the moon and the next man to walk on the moon in four years' time. So exciting things coming out of NASA. We're going to have much more on this story coming up on News Nation tonight at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. That is on WGN America. I would urge you, if you don't have the WGN America app or you haven't used our website, go check it out. It is state of the art. Maybe out of this world? Maybe it's an out of this world app. Michael, you like that? Michael's producing this right now. He's shaking his head at me like you are kind of.